Welcome to the Old Capital Real Estate Investing Podcast with Michael Becker and Paul Peebles. During this program, you will hear interviews with real-life successful investors who will share their stories and provide useful advice on how to acquire, finance, and operate apartment complexes. Now, here they are, Michael Becker and Paul Peebles. Welcome to the Old Capital Real Estate Investing Podcast. I'm your host, Paul Peebles, National Underwriter for Old Capital. And joining me today would typically be Michael Becker, but he is on another due diligence assignment, and we wish him the best on another acquisition. So good for Michael. So in the podcast today, we have, of course, James Eng with Old Capital. James, how are you? Great. Thanks for having me, Paul. So James, what's going on in the Old Capital world? A couple things. We just wrapped up our second webinar, Multifamily Financing 202 sort of the advanced topics on financing. So when it fits in the Fannie Mae box, great, but what happens when it doesn't? And so the things and the hoops that you have to jump through to get through that. So we had about 450 people on that webinar. So if you did not catch that, you can catch the recording at the oldcapitalpodcast.com website. And then also, if you haven't signed up for our September 13th event at AT AT&T Stadium, our big once a year conference, go on the website and do that. So some great information. And then do not forget two things. The 17-page white paper report on uh, multifamily financing. You do want to uh, download that. So go to the Old Capital Podcast website, Old Capital Podcast website, and download the 17-page multifamily financing, single-spaced with report written by Michael Becker and myself, and also James Zhang. So with a lot of great detailed information on that. And then if you do like some of the content we push out there and you want to figure out what's going on next with Old Capital, make sure you like on the Old Capital Facebook page and go on there and, and like us. So we, we appreciate that. James, uh, do you fly airplanes at all? Not typically. Not, not typically? Well, I fly them. So I'm a pilot. So I always like to use my airplane analogies. So to become a pilot like anything, you need specific information. I mean, they, somebody can hand you a bunch of books or you could watch a bunch of videos on on YouTube, but you actually have to go behind the, the stick of an airplane and learn how to fly it. So there's not a lot of people that know how to do this until they actually do it. So most people use a certified flight instructor, a CFI, somebody that teaches them the basics of flight, sits with them almost one-on-one in the cockpit, tells them where they're, they got to go. Make sure there's no mistakes made. And in today, we have a version of a certified flight instructor. It is Brad Sumrock. So we're uh, happy to have Brad in the podcast. Brad, how are you? Hey, Paul. Hey, James. I'm, I'm doing really good today. So thanks for coming in. And let's talk a little bit about Brad Sumrock and some of the things that uh, he's going to help us as an instructor pilot on how to fly some of these apartment buildings. So Brad, I mean, you have done a lot in the multifamily space, not only buying your own multifamily, but then also helping others buy a lot of multifamily. So maybe let's say you did get on an airplane and you typically on a lot of airplanes, but if you got onto an airplane and sat next to somebody else and they said, what do you do? How would you explain that to somebody? Well, I get asked that a lot and I always say two things. I say we buy apartment buildings, so we've bought over 30, almost 3,800 doors and currently have 2,200, but my passion is really helping other people do what it is that I was able to do with apartment investing, so I help other people profitably invest in apartments, whether as a syndicator, a passive investor, or an individual owner. So when did you start doing that in terms of mentoring? Well, I've been mentoring people really, what is it here? Like 12 years. My first apartment building, my first investment property ever was actually not a single family home. It was a 32 unit multifamily building way back in 2002. And I quit my job in 2005. And so shortly after that, I started mentoring other people because, I mean, let's face it, I was able to replace a six figure income, W2 income with a six figure investment income. Right, right. Okay. So you really started, you know, maybe your own mentoring company, I would say in 2013. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. And then, so I guess maybe explain to the group, how has the business changed from when you started to now in terms of the size of the group and sort of, you know, when you first started, 
what really has changed in that time frame? Oh my gosh. I mean, since 2013, a lot has changed in, in so many aspects. So just, you know, with our mentoring business, I mean, our first seminar, we had just over a hundred people. And I remember, you know, we had a half a bus when we would do our student bus tours. And now we have, you know, 500 people at our seminars that we do three times a year. And we have five bus loads of of students when we do our student bus tours and when we look at properties for sale and that are owned by other students. I mean, just a number of deals that we're doing now, like last year in 2017, and I'll just use my last name because that's what we call our program, the Brad Sumrock Apartment Investor Mastery Program. You know, last year there were 37 apartments, complexes purchased all over the United States. And this year so far, which is we're only halfway through the year, we've already have 16 purchased and 15 more under contract. So by July, we'll have 31 buildings purchased already just, you know, within a half a year. Now, 2013, I think maybe, you know, I helped people buy like 10, 10 apartment buildings back then. So in terms of size, if somebody's looking at joining a mentoring program, how does the size... You know, some people might want a smaller program. What are some of the positives of being such a large program and so many transactions occurring within the group? Well, the thing that happens a lot is, you know, there's a lot of people out there that offer apartment or multifamily mentoring, coaching and education. So my first comment, I I think, is ours. Ours is the best at that because I get personally involved with every single deal that's that's purchased. So I'm not like a sales guy that just does seminars and there's no rush to the back of the room type of thing at our events. So I am the main mentor and educator and I'm personally involved in the deals. But what makes our program different is that, you know, some of these coaches and mentors will say like, Oh, if you find a good deal, the money will come. But then they come into our program saying, Hey, I found this deal and the numbers work, but I couldn't raise the money. So what we offer is not just coaching, we offer an entire what we call an ecosystem. And so we have a lot of people in our group, for example, that are passive investors and they come in mainly to be passive investors. And so they want to invest with the syndicators. Okay. And then we have syndicators that come in that, that, that want to meet the passive investors. And then, you know, we have a whole a group of service providers of, you know, you guys are, are one of our preferred service providers. And these aren't just people that pay us, to come into our program. I don't just take anybody's, you know, I don't allow people to just come in and I don't need their 2,500 or 5,000 bucks. It's people that that I've actually worked with or or my students and my team have actually worked with. So it's people that have a proven track record providing services in the apartment investing industry. So I think that's what makes our program unique is that it's not just coaching. It's, it's everything an apartment investor needs to be successful. We run into a lot of investors and a lot of investors will come to us and say they're part of this program or that program. And the one unique thing is a lot of these teachers or mentors, a lot of times you have to partner with them. And so I think one of the unique things about your program is these students are not only the general partner, but then they are putting together, you know, a strong key principal group and then also raising the equity. So not every deal. So on those 30 deals, you're not partnering with every student, right? I'm partnering with very few students. So, you know, again, our model, yeah, that's a good point. Like our model is not, you know, let me mentor you and I'm going to take a piece of all your deals. It's let me teach you how to do what it is that I'm able to do, which is purchase or syndicate large apartment businesses. And maybe I think there's maybe two out of those 30 that that my students actually asked me to come into the deal. So like two out of 30. And the truth is I don't want to be in all these deals because I only get into deals that are, you know, strategic for me. So I look for deals that are in certain markets and especially, you know, I don't want to be on all these loans as a guarantor. I'll be on a few, but I don't want to be on 30 or 50 loans in a year, even though they're non recourse. So yeah, that's our, our model is we're primarily when it comes to the education and mentoring is we, provide the the coaching the providers and a network of other investors that make it easier for people to again have everything they need to be a successful syndicator or a successful passive investor and they don't, they don't need to go anywhere else 
And I just started using this question a couple months ago, and I think I used it at your R2R just as an example, is a lot of investors, if I handed them a $5 million deal today and told them to close it in 60 days, most people could not. But almost every one of your students, if I did that to them, they could close it. And they have not only the network to raise the equity, so a million dollars to put down, but then also the ability for KPs and other experienced sponsors to partner with in your network. Correct. Now, again, there's no guarantee. There's I no mean, guarantee. If, somebody, right. if somebody doesn't show up to a networking event or they do don't the talk work. to anybody or they walk away from the event with zero business cards, then just to be clear, like I don't raise capital for people right. and everyone's following SEC laws. But what happens in our networking events and our educational events is that people are building these pre-existing SEC compliant relationships in advance so that when they find the deal, they have a more reasonable chance of getting the deal closed. Closed and approved. And yeah, I mean, from our perspective, you know, when your students come in, we have confidence in that number one, they can raise the equity, but number two, they can qualify for the loan. And so that ability to you know, work with your students and just have pretty much 100% success rate on getting these deals closed is great for us and for your students. Yeah, it's a value-added th- thing that Brad has created a platform, and I, and I think it's a, that ecosystem is very important because you can get a bunch of education, you can watch a bunch of videos out there, but if you don't have a platform or, or an ecosystem to fund your transactions, just like any good idea, it will fall apart if the money is not there. So, Brad, you've had a tremendous amount of success. You've, you know, just last year, you guys did over, what, 50 apartment transactions. Your students closed over almost a half a billion dollars worth of acquisitions. And then some things that people don't know about you. Tell us a little bit about where you where you actually started. You know, you're not from the Texas, Fort Worth area, but uh, tell me a little bit about where you grew up at and where you went to, to school at. And tell me a little bit more about Brad Sumrock. Well, you know, I I certainly wasn't born with a silver spoon. I'll say that. My father, you know, made less than 50,000 a year growing up and he never finished college. He finished three years of engineering school and I grew up in a suburb of Pittsburgh. And so, you know, my father's boss was an engineer and made a lot more money than my dad. So my parents encouraged me to study hard in school and get good grades and to become an engineer. And that's what I did. And very shortly in my engineering career, I realized that I didn't really want to be an engineer. And so I went back to school and got an MBA because that's what our society doesn't think twice about, you know, paying 50000 a year in today's dollars for an education, right? But, oh, heaven forbid, if you spend a couple hundred bucks to go to a seminar, everybody's like, oh, well, that's a ripoff. You know, it's just interesting, <laughs> right? But yeah, so I, you know, I went and spent another Back in 1996, 30-some thousand dollars to get an MBA. And I ended up making six figures after that MBA. And I just thought back then that if once I made six figures that my life would be like, that's everything I ever wanted to accomplish until I got, and it was until I got laid off for the first time. And then I got another job and I lost my job again within a year. And I'm thinking, okay, this, if I could say this on the show, this sucks. It's like I got two degrees, 17 years of corporate experience And I was out of a job two times. So that's when I realized I needed to do something different with my life. And option A was I studied for the LSAT and considered becoming a lawyer. And option B was, well, I picked up the Rich Dad, Poor Dad book and it talked about ESBI and real estate. And I decided at that moment that I wanted to be a business owner and an investor. So you mean you graduated, the undergraduate from Carnegie Mellon, which is... uh that's right. Pretty good school. You got your MBA down at the University of Houston. So, but but then you transitioned into engineering, or you had been in engineering, and then transitioned into real estate. But you had a mentor at that period of time, and you got specific education. Talk a little bit about the value of having a mentor and specific education in the field. Well, I believe in in mentors to this day. I mean, I am a mentor. I've had mentors. I went to a seminar in 2002 and, and that mentor helped me get my first apartment building. My first real estate investment was not 
a single family home, a fourplex, an eightplex. And that's what I thought I was going to do. But I was able to buy a 32 unit building, which to me at that point in 2002, that was like huge. And to this day, I just think that mentoring is a huge component for anybody. I mean, now my mentors are people like Kenny McElroy of the Rich Dad Real Estate Advisor and Robert Kiyosaki. And, you know, I study a lot of Tony Robbins and study a lot of Grant Cardone works and things like that. But, you know, the people I'm studying are people that are at a different place. They're at a place higher than me in terms of their business, their income, you know, the amount of people they're helping. And so I just believe that, you know, my parents mentored me to be to go to college, but they never mentored me to be a business owner or an investor because they weren't business owners and they weren't investors. So one of the things that I learned about mentoring is if you can't learn something from somebody that hasn't done what it is you want to do. And I'll say that again, you can't learn something from somebody that hasn't done what it is you want to do. And so the other way to say it is if you want to achieve something, find somebody that's doing it, has a track record and is available to hold your hand, you know, every step of the way during the process. So that's what we do now. So you had a 30 some unit building and you sold that, made some money. You had another 30 some unit building, you sold that, and then you own a couple other buildings. And then you must have been pretty damn good because the National Apartment Association awarded you Apartment Owner of the Year in 2012? 2012. So what is that like? To There's only one person that gets that award of the entire nation. That's, that's correct. So, you know, the, the National Apartment Association has an annual conference and, you know, you have to apply. So the, the thing, I, the application process is actually pretty rigorous. I remember submitting a 36 page application back then. And I thought, man, I bet half like 90% of the people just give up and they don't complete the application, (laughs) (laughs) you know, because it's a long application. But, you know, I went through that application and it was just such an honor to be selected by the National Apartment Association in 2012 as the independent rental owner of the year for properties over 100 units. There was a big award ceremony that, that was in Boston. It was in Boston. That's something that will always stand out to me is kind of like, you know, in the movies, they have, what is it, Emmys, and then the TVs, they have the Oscars, or maybe I reversed it. That's that's how much I watch TV and movies, <laughs> by the way. But, you know, this was sort of my version of like going to Hollywood and receiving an Oscar. Yeah, because there was thousands of people in the audience, and then you were up on stage, and the spotlight was on you, and they wa- had you walk across the stage after they showed a big picture of you in, in your, your property. What was it that changed that property that garnered you that, that award? Well, first, I want to say I'd, I remember that moment, and I prepared like a 45-minute speech, <laughs> and they didn't even let me talk. They just gave me the award and ushered me off of the stage, so I, I was a little disappointed there. But uh, in all seriousness, yeah, so we bought this property, and I always say it was like the old, I'm I'm showing how old I am here, but there was a book by Continental Airlines that Gordon Bethune wrote, and it was called From Worst to First. Great book, by the way. And so we took this property from the worst property in the submarket to the best property in the submarket in about a three-year period. And it's not just about the income that we made, and we did a great job in improving the income, but it was really about how we repositioned the property, made it a clean, functional, you know, and safer place for families to live and, and you know, created more amenities and reduced the crime just by having good property management and actually caring about the property and the people that live there. And so um, if you look at that submarket now, the entire submarket there has transformed, and I believe that we kind of led the way there. I'm not taking credit for the whole trend, but I mean, we started with that property and then the next one got purchased and then the one next to it got purchased. And now that submarket is one of the most desirable submarkets in Arlington, Texas, whereas in 2011, it was one of the least desirable. Where Domino's pizza drivers wouldn't even be allowed on the property. That's correct. Well, the Domino's pizza drivers wouldn't go to the property. They wouldn't deliver pizza there because they were afraid of being robbed. I actually call that... And write this down for those listening. There's the pizza delivery test. Okay. And this is how you could tell if your apartment is, is in the extreme ghetto is, is the, if it fails the pizza delivery test, you may not want to buy there unless you have a lot of experience 
<laughs> so, so we we were actually just there this past weekend in that same submarket, and some of your students just purchased a rather big property in that area. Yeah. So I mean, definitely the area has changed and it continues to improve. So going from that <laughs> property to maybe just give us a high level look at sort of what you've purchased just maybe in the last couple of years. Do you remember the number of units on that property? The one you won the award for? Yeah, that was 213, 213 doors. 213. And now just in the last couple of years, maybe give us a summary of some of the <clears throat> size properties and then the age of those properties. Yeah. So, you know, in the last couple of years, well, one of the things along that question is a lot of people ask, you know, hey, Brad, is, is now still a good time to buy? Well, first of all, you know, when I answer the question, I put my money where my mouth is. So I'm not just up on stage teaching people to buy where I'm, you know, in the background, not buying. I mean, I think there's something wrong with that. So in the last 18 months, I've done, let's see, one, two, three, four large syndications. These are all buildings that are between 28 and $34 million each. So if you add them up, it's about $125 million in acquisition volume. You know, we've raised 6 to $10 million of equity on each of these deals. And so just in the last, again, 15 to 18 months, I've bought about 15, 1,600 doors. Okay. Okay. And I'm currently, as you know, that you're doing a loan for me. I'm buying another deal and I'm, you know, right now on my own that's not a syndication. So I believe there are still good deals out there. And, and I'm not just up there teaching it from the stage. I'm out there doing it. So on this last deal, maybe give us a little insight on why you decided instead of, because I mean, a lot of your students will syndicate the equity in order to do larger transactions. So going from maybe a 300 unit deal down to 100 to 150, why did you decide to buy this deal sort of on your own without syndicating? Well, I'll try to condense that answer, yeah. but the first time I learned about this concept is I actually heard Robert Kiyosaki speak and he asked the question why he buys real estate and everybody was talking about cash flow because he's known for the, you know, the cash flow game. And he said, no, it's not the cash flow. I have enough of that. And capital gain. No, it's not the capital gain. I have enough of that. Well, as it turns out, he continues to invest in real estate, specifically apartment complexes because of the depreciation. And as, as many people know, and maybe, maybe a lot of people don't know, but you could accelerate depreciation by doing cost segregation. And so if you're a qualified real estate professional and have a lot of income, then you could offset that income through your depreciation. Now, fast forward to when the new tax law was passed here in the beginning of 2018, there's, it's even more advantageous now than ever before for apartment investors. And the bonus depreciation that was available in the past only used to be available for new buildings. And now it's available for, and I'll just make it easy to understand, it's available for used buildings. So in the past, we'd buy a 1970s, 80s, or 90s buildings. That's not new. It's used. And so you could still do the cost segregation and accelerate depreciation, but you couldn't take it all in one year. <clears throat> and now you can. And so it's a huge benefit to real estate investors, especially people that are qualified uh, real estate professionals or somehow are not subject to passive loss limitations. Okay. Okay, so if you're out there and you're not subject to passive loss limitations, buying a building and, and getting all the depreciation for yourself, which is what I'm doing now. So instead of doing a 300 units uh, syndication where I might get, you know, 10 percent of, right. of the cash flow capital gain and depreciation. Now I'm buying a 124 unit, but I get 100 percent of not only the cash flow and the gain at sale, but I get a hundred percent of the depreciation. And that helps me tremendously because it offsets income from my other apartment buildings and from my other businesses, the brokerage business, the education business, you know, consulting that we do. So it's going to save us a lot of money in taxes. So it takes a deal that pre-tax, you know, is an okay deal, potentially even a marginally okay deal to a phenomenal deal. It almost doubles the return. Okay. Okay. Wow. So it's, it's really big. And so even when you're syndicating a deal, you know, within a syndication, a lot of the people in a syndication, like in, in the Sumrock group, a lot of those, these people have, are retired or they quit their jobs and they are at least one of maybe in a, in a husband and wife relationship or a business partnership. If they're filing a joint tax return, a lot of these people are qualified real estate professionals. They're not subject to 
passive loss limitations. Okay. And they could also get that depreciation bonus. Right. No, it's it's a huge change. I, I think on Saturday you mentioned that, uh, what was Robert Kiyosaki's response when he heard this? Well, Robert Kiyosaki's response when he heard Tom Wilwright speak was, holy shit. <laughs> and he didn't even know. Yeah. Okay. Because I guess he's got people that work for him that know, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I was in the room when Tom Wilwright talked about this. And I already known it because Tom was personally consulting me on my tax strategy. It's not something that a lot of people know about. So it's something that I'm doing. And the other thing about our mentoring program, yes, what makes us different is I do what I teach. Right. Okay, I don't teach theory. If someone asks me a question and I haven't done it, I'll say, I haven't done it. You know, someone, oh, Brad, have you done a Roth rollover or whatever, 401k, IRA? I haven't done that. You know, go talk to Quest or whatever. But I, so I teach what I do and I do a lot. And, and when I do it, then I share that information with the people that find it valuable. So speaking about Tom Wilwright, I know you have an event coming up here in August, August 18th, I believe. So maybe give us a little teaser about that event and you know how people can register for that. Well, event. yeah. So this event is going to be huge. And let me just say, there's a lot of listeners out there that know me already and maybe a lot that don't. So we already do three weekend trainings a year, you know, and we typically do these in March, July, and November. And these trainings are Brad teaching for 16 hours. Okay, and and we get four or five hundred people each time. And that's a phenomenal event if you really want to learn the ABCs of apartment investing. But we also want to appeal to even more people. And so we're going to do a different type of event. That's the one you referred in August 18th. And August 18th, we're going to do a national conference for apartment investors. So this is this event is I'm still going to be teaching, but I'm going to be bringing some of the best speakers on the planet to also share their wisdom so we have Tom Wilwright as one of these speakers. And I just think Tom is, is the best when it comes to taxes for real estate investors. And Tom is going to be teaching about the new Trump tax laws and how apartment investors specifically will benefit from that. And, and that doesn't happen in my March, July, November sure. trainings. And, you know, we're going to have, you know, Russell Gray and Robert Helms with the real estate guys, and they're going to be teaching some things. And we'll have John Seabree, who's the national director of multifamily for Marcus and Millichap. And he's going to be talking about what he's seeing in the market right now nationally, because this conference is really intended for apartment investors all over the country. Okay, so it's going to be a big event. We have a really big name speaker that we've just confirmed. And I'm going to I, I can't announce it now. But by the time this is published, everyone's going to know who it is. So the, for the listeners, they need to check back on your website or my website because it will be announced and it's going to be big. And my only fear about this event is there's not going to be enough seats in the 1000 person conference center that that's going to accommodate everybody that wants to attend. And how can be, and then uh, what's the website for that, for that event? Yeah. So it's aim com. So it's a I M which is shortcut for apartment investor mastery. A I M N A T which is shortcut for national C O N, which is shortcut for conference. So aim com. Are you going to be there, James? We will be there. So we are, you know, I guess the diamond or platinum um, sponsor for that event. So definitely if you have not booked your ticket and registered on the website, definitely check that event out as we will be there as well. That's great. What else is going on? So in terms of your R to R compared to your NatCon, so if somebody's just getting started, maybe start at an R to R. And then if somebody already has experience and possibly looking to grow their portfolio, come to the NatCon event in August. Is that? I mean, it, you know, I would say come to both. Come to both. Okay. Because okay, they're both going to be amazing events that are completely different. I mean, if you're listening and you're already a Sumrock student, then I would say you definitely want to go to the NatCon because you've been to my rat race before. And I would just say, look, if you want to go deep dive into the nuts and bolts, you come to the rat race event because okay. that's what you're going to get. If you want to get exposed to some of the best speakers on the planet, and I really mean on the planet, then you got to come to the NatCon. Okay. okay. And then how do you choose? It's like saying, do I want like, you know, pizza or do I want pasta? I mean, for me, you know, I want to have both of them, you know? <laughs> no, that's great. I mean, I think, I think what a lot of people will, will get in both is also just 
you know, a lot of people who are just starting out, we usually tee up this question towards the end of our conversation is, you know, if you only had one piece of advice, I think I know what it is, but if you only had one piece of advice for a aspiring multifamily investor, what would it be? So I'll, I'll, I'll tee that up as a softball. Well, look, I mean, obviously I would say come to my training, okay? Because I believe in my training, it works. We have hundreds of success stories, but I'll just say this, you know, find somebody that's done what it is you want to do and learn from them. And for many of you, that will be me. And I've hoped I've earned the right to mentor you or for at least for you to come and check me out at one of our two day trainings or at our national conference. But, you know, I may not be right for everybody, but I would just say, look, don't do this on your own. You know, a mentor is going to save you time. They're going to, it's going to help you collapse time frames, avoid mistakes, go bigger, faster. And so I'd like to be that person for you. You get a lot of feedback. A lot of investors talk to you. Are there any bad recommendations that you hear in the multifamily education space? Well, I, I mean, I hear a lot of bad stuff. <laughs> I mean, so I'm, there's, there's a very popular online forum for real estate investors, and I'm not going to say what it is, but they're like, oh, you know, you don't need to go to a seminar, save your 500 bucks on a seminar, or don't why spend thousands of dollars on a guru who's going to supposedly help you through this you know, just take that money and invest it in your first deal. And I'm like, I'll I'll just say for me, I couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine A, getting started, trying to figure it out all on my own. And B, and that was 32 units. I mean, I'm I'm enabling people now to buy like $5 million, $10 million buildings, raising money from other people, you know, two or $3 million. And I just don't know how they would consider doing that without somebody to to walk them through the process. So just like a, a pilot needs a certified flight instructor. You have a certified apartment instructor in Brad. What people don't understand, without having a mentor or an instructor who's actually done it in the past, how dangerous this business can be, where you cannot go on to videos, you cannot go into books, and you can't talk to people who don't actually do this business, that you may have 40000 You may have $100,000 at risk in earnest money. If, if your deal doesn't go through, you want to make sure that you have somebody that, that kind of leads you by the hand and make sure that that money goes into the transaction. Or you may have a somebody that wants to work on your apartment building, and you don't know if that vendor, whether it's a plumber or a electrician, is a good one. And then Brad has this ecosystem or platform that they all kind of tell you who the best electricians are, best management companies are. So there's a huge amount of benefit to being in one of these platforms or ecosystems. And the other thing I would say is even my students, they ask for, they, you know, I love to give rules of thumb, Yeah. but you can't buy an apartment complex on a rule of thumb. So the problem with just going to like reading a book or going on a blog or like doing a chat with somebody is you're going to get rules of thumb. I see it all the time. Like, hey, what's what cap rate should I use for a C-class property in Houston? Well, oh, seven. Oh, great. Well, no, the answer isn't seven. It's not eight. It's not six. It's it depends. Yeah. Okay. So every deal has so many it depends to it. It depends on the specific location, the specific rent per square foot, the physical characteristics, the age of the property, the demographics of the tenant profile, the rehab that's required. There's a lot of it depends. And the thing is, so I have 16 years of experience of answering the it depends types of questions. We have access to national industry data where we can drill down any property in the United States with the push of a button. So if it were that easy where I could just publish a recipe book and sell it for a thousand bucks, I'd do it. But I would be doing people a disservice if I did that because to, to try to just take a recipe book and then have someone go and buy and profitably run an apartment building, I think there's just so much more to it. There's just so many different moving parts. I mean, that was a lot. I think we've covered a lot of ground. Is there anything else we need to cover, Paul? Or do you think, I mean, I, I wanted people to get an understanding of sort of your background. And I think we've covered that. But then also how your group is different and how you differentiate yourself in the marketplace. Is there anything else that you would want people to cover or want people to know about you? And then how can people get more information about your your programs? Well, look, I, I always just say, come and, and check us out. 
we offer at our weekend trainings, like our upcoming rat race in July, I offer a hundred percent money back guarantee. If our training isn't for you after day one, just come and see us in the back of the room and we'll refund your money. That rarely happens. Maybe one or two out of 400 might take that offer. But the bottom line is, is like, come check us out before you make that decision. You know, so many people, they, they meet me and I'm like, oh, Brad, I, I wish I would have met you before I just signed up for ABC's program and spent twenty five thirty thousand dollars $30,000 and now that I've seen you and your program and your people and their culture and their results, I wish I would have met you. So come and check us out. That's why our weekend trainings, it's a low investment. I mean, it's for a couple hundred bucks, depending on the, the timing of the ticket, you know, because we do early bird and depending on when you're listening to this and when they go to my website. But basically, it's a couple hundred bucks. They could come and check us out, get a lot of content. And they'll also get to know me because I teach the event for 16 hours. They're not just going to learn from me about apartment investing. They're going to get to know who I am because you can't fake who you are for 16 hours right. on stage. Eventually it comes out. It comes out. <laughs> so that's my recommendation. So can you give me some some nuggets, some giveaways to some of these folks? Your training and your education, your mentoring is, is just not for Texas. I mean, you... You have a house in Florida. Last week you were in California. This week you'll be in California. You're in Arizona. You're in Denver two weeks ago. You mentor throughout the country. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, that. I'm glad you asked that, Paul, because what I do and what I teach works everywhere. Now, I do teach about selecting markets that are landlord and business friendly, have high job growth, high population growth you know, the common sense, things like that. But I mean, let's talk about that real quick. Yeah. Cause that, that is a nugget because being landlord friendly, what really does that mean? Well, a couple of things. So like in Texas, Arizona, Florida, Colorado, Oklahoma, which are by the way, States that I've all owned or own properties. in, you could typically evict somebody for in 30 days or less for non-payment of rent. You know, that's a landlord friendly environment. Now you might go to a non-landlord friendly environment like California, Hawaii, Washington, Massachusetts, uh, just some examples that you it could take six to nine months to evict somebody for non-payment or rent. So I would rather be in the other in the first category than the second category. I mean, wouldn't you? Absolutely. So that I mean that's in, that's important. So you teach a little bit about which which states are landlord friendly and which ones are not. How about the the growth? I mean, you like kind of the bottom half of the United States, and and why do you like that? Well, again, you know, the, up until about four years ago, I only owned in Texas and I would get this question. So I actually went out to prove to people <laughs> which, as if there are no apartment investors anywhere else. Right. It's kind of ironic. But so I went out and bought a property in Colorado Springs. Well, we already sold that after three years and made a bunch of money. And I bought a property in Ohio and I bought a property in Jacksonville and we sold that and made a bunch of money. And now we bought another property in Jacksonville and I have a couple in Oklahoma City and my students, I mean, oh, I have a deal in Wichita Falls, which is a smaller market here in Texas. And I have students that are buying in like Des Moines, Iowa, Phoenix, Atlanta, Kansas City. I mean, you know, all they're, they're the all States. over the United States. But typically it's going to be we're typically in the southeast, the south and the southwest. And then there's some Midwest markets that, that have higher job growth. We stay away from the Midwest areas that have stagnation or flat or stagnant economies, okay? But if you find a place like Columbus or Indianapolis or Cincinnati that might have a little bit more robust activity, then those the, I like those markets. But in the Southeast, you know, you have Charlotte, you have Atlanta, you have Jacksonville, Tampa, Orlando, which are great markets. You know, within Texas, the major cities in the Texas Triangle are still good markets. They're not emerging markets, like some of the gurus will say, like, let's face it, Dallas has emerged. Okay, it's been emerged, but it's still a great market because the economy is just crushing in here. People keep moving here, jobs are being created, you know, rents keep going up. So even though there's been compression and cap rates in these markets, we could still find good deals. And then we're also finding deals like in the outer, these tertiary and secondary markets from a lot of these cities. Okay. So when people come into these three time a year conferences that you do, the the R to R's, 
you teach them all these little mm-hmm. little pieces, the, the nuggets? Yeah, and the, and the reason we call it R to R is that event's called Rat Race to Retirement because it's very personal to me. It's like my personal story. I went from the corporate world to retirement, and that's why I call the race Rat Race to Retirement, and I did that through apartment investing. So, you know, what we cover, what I cover, I say we because it's our company, but I am the teacher. And what I cover is, you know, finding the deals, analyzing the deals, the, doing the due diligence, the rehab, the repositioning, you know, how to find the deals, where do you go to get the deals? And then even before that, how do you get prepared? Like, what do you need to do to prepare yourself to get ready to be, whether as you're a passive investor or a syndicator, how do you be successful in the business? Yeah, having a mentor sets the expectations correctly for the student and absolutely helps us when we put together the financing Another thing I wanted to focus on is these bus trips, which is kind of unique for a lot of educational groups. Why do you get people on a bus and why do you want them to touch, feel and and see what a B and C class apartment is? Well, because there's there's only so much you could learn from sitting in a classroom. So when, you know, our weekend events on Saturday, we do a lot of classroom training. And then Sunday for a half day, I want to take them in the field so that they could combine that theory they got in Saturday and they will get Sunday afternoon. But there's nothing like being able to, as a result of coming to one of these bus tours, you're going to know just even on one bus tour, how a B-class property is different than a C-class property. And you'll be able to see the, the surrounding area, the cars in the parking lot, the demographics, the people living at the property, the look and feel of the property, the characteristics of these properties. And B and C class properties exist everywhere. So some people are like, well, how is it, you know, how is going on a Dallas apartment bus tour going to help me if I'm going to buy in Nashville? And it's like, it's because Nashville, Phoenix, Atlanta, Jacksonville, they all have workforce housing. We're buying middle class properties where the working class live. Yeah, that's why I say, you know, mathematics is the same as in Texas, as, as in Nashville or in Florida. One plus one equals two here. One plus one equals two in Nashville. There's really no difference. You learn here and execute in the, the, the town that you live in. Yeah. And that, the other thing, I know you didn't ask, but people ask me, well, Brad, I would come to your training if you would come to your town. Well, you know what? I do the trainings in Dallas because I want to have a certain quality of life. You know, my wife and I decided in 2013 when we started our education company that unlike a lot of the traveling gurus that are like going from city to city every weekend, that's not what we want to do. Okay, so it's a quality of life issue. We want to have fewer training events that are larger. The larger a number of people benefits everybody because everybody's networking and connecting with each other. But we do our training events in Dallas, Texas. I don't even, I'm not even a Texas resident anymore. I'm a Florida resident. I own in six different states. What we do works anywhere. We have deals in 21 different markets. Our students own deals in 21 different markets in the United States. But we do our trainings and our national conference in Dallas, Texas. So I always like, we were talking about before we started this podcast about how everyone comes back a little different after seeing a B and C property. It's just a different smell, I think (laughs) is is a good way to put it when you go on these properties. So definitely appreciate that. And I think uh, people get a ton of value. I've probably been to, I don't know, maybe 10 R to R. So it's definitely learn different nuggets every time. So I guess to wrap up, just what is the best way for someone to reach out to you and sort of learn a little bit more about your upcoming events? Yeah, if they go to bradsumrock.com, that's the best single point of contact. And there's no C in my last name. So it's B-R-A-D-S-U-M-R-O-K.com. And, you know, there's a contact us tab there. So if you if you have a specific question, you could reach out. Uh, you'll find information about our uh, rat race event upcoming in July. For the national conference, I would say go to the aimnatcon.com. Some great information, Brad. Thanks for uh, getting on the podcast. Thanks for explaining a little bit more to everyone about what you do and what sets your group apart. And uh, we appreciate uh, working with you. James, anything more to add? No, I think your group has done a phenomenal job just these last you know, three or four years in really setting the bar high. And we appreciate all the business from your group. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, James. I'm Paul Peebles. Have a great day. 
Thanks for listening to the Old Capital Real Estate Investing Podcast. Please join us at oldcapitalpodcast.com to sign up for our weekly email updates. We'll see you next week for another great interview.